Hi, I'm Barry List for Informs, and you're watching the latest in an online series about the best ways that your organization can use analytics. This special segment is devoted to success factors in analytics. Our guest today is Glenn Wegren, the former Associate Director, Product Supply Analytics for Procter & Gamble. Glenn, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Barry. Tell us a little bit about Procter & Gamble and your role there in relation to analytics. Sure. Uh, Procter & Gamble is uh, the largest consumer packaged good company in the world, uh, over $80 billion in, in sales. We compete in uh, over 30 different market segments, uh, category segments in the world. It makes it a very rich and, and interesting area to solve a lot of problems uh, for a company like this. We, um, I lead the supply chain and advanced analytics capability for the company. It's a global group. Uh, we solve problems uh, wherever the company has them. Uh, yeah. You've developed an analytics success model. Can you give us, first of all, an overview? Yeah, I think it, uh, uh, analytics success, like anything, just comes down to a matter of uh, have you created the right demand for uh, what you're selling, and do you have the right supply capability in place? Um, demand just comes uh, in an internal organization uh, like we have at P&G. It always comes down to do you have a clear business proposition? Uh, have, you, have you packaged up the capabilities that you have in a way that are appealing to your business client, uh, that speaks in the language of your business client, and, and really uh, develops and delivers, has the great potential to deliver uh, business value for them. The supply side of it is, is really understanding how to organize for the success of it. Um, that goes everything, uh, from everything from understanding the right kind of talent that you need, uh, the right kind of relationships that you need to have within the organization in other functional areas like IT or finance. Um, and, then, uh, uh, and then finally understanding how you might be able to source uh, some services both from within the company as well as partnering with external partners as well too. And that's all part of the blend of how you create the right kind of winning business proposition for an analytics success, success model. Although we're talking a lot about, math and ma about mathematics, human beings are an important part of the success of an, an analytics department. What are the success factors in picking the right people? Uh, that, it's, uh, it's a tough one, um, uh, but it is absolutely the most important uh, part of uh, the job of uh, leading an analytics capability. It, it boils down in, in our shop to four key areas. Uh, the first is having technical competence. Um, uh, that generally means an operations research or a, some form of a quantitative analysis uh, degree. Uh, it, it, at most, actually at a master's level. Um, we have a, a few PhD level um, operations research professionals, but for the lion's share of our work, it is, uh, it is a master's and occasionally it's a bachelor's level uh, degree as well. But they need to have the quantitative capability. That is a fundamental uh, understanding of the tools, the methodologies, uh, the, right, the right way to go about uh, tackling and solving a business problem. Uh, the second area is uh, understanding a domain that you're operating in. This usually comes with on-the-job experience, so uh, understanding a supply chain area, a uh, finance area, uh, P&G, large consumer package company, we have a lot of marketing that goes on, understanding the marketing space, uh, how, that, how that business area operates. A third area for us is uh, one of communication. Uh, one cannot just have strong technical capabilities and understand the domain that they're operating in without really knowing how to communicate effectively what they do. If they, are, if they don't know how to engage with people, have a, a conversation, understand what the needs are, and then be able to deliver uh, results of analyses back or the way a tool operates uh, in a manner that, that uh, a business client can understand. Uh, then you're not going to be as successful. The final part, the fourth part, is one that has always been a very strong component of virtually any uh, leader at P&G, and that is leadership. Uh, one needs to understand how to uh, take everything from understanding what a future state might be, envisioning it, understand how to engage the right type of people to understand how you can package up a potential solution, 
um, engaging them in a way that you obtain the type, right type of resources, and then energizing people in order to deliver it and effectively, um, uh, del at the end of the day, deliver the results. So it's those four pieces that, that not everyone has them to begin with, but to really be successful in this, this area, uh, those four will come out in one way or another as part of what your success is. The way an analytics department conducts its operations is another part of your model. Should you run an analytics department like a business? Yes. yes. Tell us more. And yes, okay. yes. Um, it is a business at the end of the day. Um, and uh, again, there are, there are a couple of key pieces of what running a business is all about. The first thing is uh, having a business plan. And that means know who your target audience is, know what their strategies are and what their objectives. Uh, and then get it down in some written form where you can articulate that and express that in, in a manner that you understand what your objectives are. Um, the second area is, uh, is one that perhaps uh, is the most challenging to a lot of people that, particularly from a technical community standpoint, but that is marketing. And that is building the equity behind what it is that the brand is that you're delivering to your business clients. It is, a, it is an incredibly important component of uh, what an overall running a business and an analytics business is about. Um, we established our supply chain analytics group over 15 years ago, and uh, we, we called it global analytics. That just happened to be what we called it at the time. Four years ago, we changed the name to something that was more specific to the domain that we were operating in. But over that, that five or that 10 year period, we had developed such an equity behind uh, the results that we deliver that to this day, our clients still call us Global Analytics, our original name. Uh, that's a strong equity statement that you need to have and that's part of how you market and make sure that you're continuing to communicate what you're doing and the results that you're delivering. Third area is pricing. Uh, you need to know the value of your service and you need, need to be able to come up with the right recovery mo mechanism for it as well too. That's part of what it is. And the last part is you need to develop a scorecard. You need to track what your key metrics are that are aligned with what your organization's goals are and you need to be able to be accountable for them. So at the end of the day, yes, you need to run it like it's a business and that's, that, that is what creates a sustainable uh, uh, success model. Historically, some analytics and operations research departments have failed because they were slow to deliver results or didn't understand what they should deliver. What's your take on this? Uh, well, first, refer to my previous answer about running like a business. Okay. Um, you, you need to have uh, clear, measurable uh, 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 indices or metrics that you're, you're, you're tackling against, and they should be aggressive in their nature. Um, but as far as delivering solutions and being slow to deliver them, uh, some of the mechanisms that we've learned are, first off, you have to have friends and you need to have, um, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, IT friends, you need to have finance friends, you might need um, engineering friends, um, uh, associates that can help you deliver the results that you need because Oftentimes, more often times than not, you're not able to do it just with your own analytical capability. You need to have that support and, uh, capability as well. Um, if you're developing a tool or an application of some form, one thing that we found to be extremely uh, effective is uh, do not go um, in, interview a client, write down the specs, and then say, we'll be back to see you in six months when we have something that, that works and operates. Instead, what we do is fast proto-cycling, and we tend to do it with a top leader. And uh, what that means is, instead of saying, if you could carve out two hours for us to do an end-to-end -end review with you in six months, would you instead give us 15, 20 minutes of your time every two weeks? And what we can do is, and what you need to be prepared to do is not expect a final product in delivery, but help us deliver this so that we are sure that we are really delivering something that is truly going to meet your business needs. And we do that because the business changes constantly. And so what might be true today clearly will not be true in six months. So you need to be able to show that you're flexible and adaptive and be able to do quick wins and deliver them very quickly. And I think the final piece is 
um, project management. Um, project management skills are extremely important in this profession and one that many don't necessarily naturally have. Um, if, if you're perceived as being slow to deliver, you need to tune up your project management skills because that will get you on track to be very clear and focused on what your deliverables are and, what, and really what your right to succeed is. Final question, how do you scale up the results you deliver? Um, again, that depends on what it is that you're delivering. Um, it could be if you're developing an application, you need to have control of the application. Uh, while I love spreadsheets like any, any good OR uh, analytic professional does, uh, they are, at the end of the day, inherently uncontrollable. Once you release them to a client, they could become anything. I'm a strong proponent of using web capabilities to be able to, to create a, a much tighter control over the application itself. Now, if you're talking about the services of analytics, that's a little bit different. Um, every organization is always under constraint of resources. No one has the luxury of an abundance of them. So you need to s intelligently manage the f resources that you do have, uh, leverage their top skills, and then look at partnering externally, um, either through other consultancies or through uh, an offshore capability if it is something that is very easy to um, articulate, uh, spec, and have delivered on a regular recurring basis. So it depends on what your deliverable is. Thank you, Glenn Wegman of P&G. Thank you. And thank you for watching this quick take on analytics from INFORMS, the Institute for Operations Research and the Management Sciences. For more about INFORMS on the web, visit us at www.informs.org. Thank you.